Uh, hello guys. Oh. This is something. Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. It looks like. Um, this one's gonna be going over how to build this this goofy goober jet engine I made, and it's actually it's actually not that big compared to what I normally make tutorials on, so I guess let's get right into it. How much space am I gonna need in front of this? Like one long beam between my main pilot seat. I'll we'll just start it back here. So I'll have plenty of space. So once you build it, your main pilot seat up like a couple blocks. I think this was yeah, this was four blocks. Um, just place your main pilot seat on it. Um, in actual builds, you just have to make sure your main pilot seat is on a piece that's connected to the the base of the magnet. I don't know if that's just all by accident that I've come to believe it, but I think, I honestly think you have to have your main pilot seat connected to something on the end on that, that is somehow connected to the magnet. Because whenever I, I've had builds that don't, and they just sometimes like the bug, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just the you have to have your main pilot seat close. Actually, that's a magnet. So what you do, you have your um, anchored block. I put it on M with physics. Then you have a motor with just zero completely, and then you have a magnet. If you real, uh, if you want to, you could remove a lot of uh, extra things and make this even more compact. Like you could literally just do this and then have a powered motor here that turns your whatever blade mechanism you want. But um, since this is the jet engine, there's a lot of sp extra space lying around. And in that extra space, I put a little hover engine thingy, my bob. So let me find where I left the hover engines. There they are, hover thrusters. So I placed them going around this way with this one up on the left and this one down on the right. And just grab your motors again. It's completely like zeroed off on settings. They're, they have no settings at all. They lost their settings. And then you'll kind of have this kind of like squarish, goofy goober looking thing. And that's gonna turn your stuff. Um, I, you can use, you, you can use, you can try to use um, springs for this, but I hate using springs with um, magnet lock just because the magnet will try to the best of its ability to lock on to the springs. It can still work, it's just a lot more painful to do so. But also you're gonna have an, a little, um, what I did is I had an extra little TNT block here that explodes at the very end after everything's done set it up. Um, because this is kind of like the last thing you want to get, get like bugged out and move around so. Anyways, uh, so now we're gonna go start moving forward, I guess. So, in front of the magnet, you have, well, not there, but in front, I'm gonna do that because if I place it here and then try to delete the old one that's behind it, it might want me to delete my magnet. Also, for, yeah, magnet settings equals right bracket 5, 10, toggle weld super strength. That's what I, that's what I always use for magnet locking. Might boost the range a little bit sometimes, but not much. Anyways, so this is just a normal block in front of the camera block you can make this camera block a block it just helps show that there's it's kind of like I don't know I just I added that there instead of a normal block you could use you could put a cylinder there if you wanted to have a bunch of cylinders I'm assuming for some reason I always use cameras but they seem to work so then you're gonna get these settings 0.35 1000 speed powered lock I mean, this can technically be anything. I just did it 0.35 because I was like, I was just gonna hold it down for a bit and let it turn to like a 35 or 45 degree angle. And then what I added on top of that was a control surface, which with equals equals set on. And this is kind of the outer ring of blades. The first kind of ring of blades is actually just a text. So the first ring of um, I will, I'm gonna put this emoji combo in the, um, I'll put this, the emoji combo in the description, or I think a pinned comment will be easier to access, so I can try that, but anyway, so it's going to be turning, this is gonna be pushing it, this is gonna be the leading edge, actually, since this is this, it's gonna be turning this way, so we'll just have to 
keep that in mind. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we are. So this is what it's gonna look like. Why can't I see down here? Oh, it's probably, oh, these texts like to bug out when you look down at your build spot, but anyways, now we can move right into the next one. Wait, let me flip that, there we go. Because there is another one right above it. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. You're gonna have a bunch of these stacked up pretty tall in front of it because they're all gonna clip together an angle in a specific way. And the next ones are made out of motors here. And that's why I had a, you need some kind of block behind these motors so that this magnet's able to get a good grip on them. But anyways, uh, we can actually start building the root of the magnet locking. And what I use is I, you need a separate key to preemptively lock um, this. Then you need a key to magnet lock. Then you need a key to clip all the bottom parts um, together and uh, make sure everything's set up. And then you need one last key, which I used Anna's, to just um, to unanchor the blade. Because I realized if I locked this and the blade was un and un unanchored the blade with it, blade would pop off and start jiggling around the outside of it and it wouldn't be able to get into the center again after this all locked together but we'll go over that in a bit so um anyways so once you've set up that let's go up to motors do that looks like we're doing the same thing again motor uh, except this time we're using an extra block So this block is 0 0.25, 0 0.25 thousand motor lock speed. And you're going to be using, you're just going to be angling something generally like 0.45 degrees and then clipping the rest together and then hoping that it should be around that much uh, clipped. Or you can build one of my machines that helps you angle if you want, but that's optional. So PVP blocks, explosive block zero. Now I can start making the motor locking. So for motor locking, I use springs. I'm going to use TNT for all of this probably, unless I literally run out of TNT blocks, but I don't like having any spring lock near my magnet lock. Not fun. Not fun. It's not a fun moment. And this goes up to here. Keeps going up. We'll just, we'll just make it go up all the way. Let me hop my jetpack. There we go. One, two, three, four. This takes a while. The least fun part of playing crazy, other than spawning in your large build for it to completely bug out, is probably motor, like building a lot of motor locking. Building the motor locking towers actually would be a way to put it. Cylinder, cylinder. Oh, let's place the cylinder over there. Cylinder, cylinder, and a block. Then grab some more PVP blocks. And you're gonna place your next one right here. Zero, zero. And your last one right there. Now, since I'm a big PVP block fan, I'm just gonna put, um, what I actually, what, what I use for this one? O. Okay, so what I use is O to lock them together. O lock, yeah, so O locks them together. Um, so you can see right here, this one would get jettisoned off when this locks. So that's why, even if I had a spring, it would do the same thing. So that's why you want to add a little text right here. Just make sure it starts here and ends here on that block. Like, so that if this block didn't exist, this would still be able to clip. But anyways, let me put that block back really quick. <clears throat> oh, zero, zero. Okay, this is all good. Let's add in these extra motors here first. So the very top one is a 0.75, a thousand, and then the next one is a 0.5, a thousand powered lock. So now we, we can go span the rest of these motors that we need. And 
then we can grab these little control surfaces, just sprinkle them on the outside before we do the rest, um, the rest of the work and add the texts. Oh, and make sure you had your cameras on the end so that the camera can get a, I mean, so that the, um, the magnet can get a good grip on them. So the magnet can get a grip on reality. Oh, let's see. This goes here. So the leading edge is on the bottom on this side. Since it's turning, this, this is going to be pushing the side down. Leading edge on the top, on the right side of the top. On the back side of the back. Since this one's going up. And right here, we're just missing. Oh, this one didn't load in. If you place them too fast and have something that has like a lot of them, you can bug out sometimes. Also, I realized I placed this one backwards. Bottom is right side. Bottom right, top left. Okay, looks like we got everything right. Top left, top left. Oh, wait, 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 top left. Top left, top. This one's wrong. Top left, bottom right. Top left. No, 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 do, 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 and then da, da. That's bottom right top. Okay, there we go. That means this first uh, part is done. So make sure your main pilot seat is on your camera. We can start to work on making sure it clips together. So for this, it's all just eight and nine uh, equals and minus an eight and nine. Oh gosh, give me a sec. There's one other thing you need to do I forgot about, and that is do this. So you're gonna run out a couple blocks to the side. Just build a little motor locking system. Very small, not that much work, but this is gonna clip them together after you angle them so that it can, this will all work. You could actually use disconnectors for this. That would be an ideal place to use them. Actually, using disconnectors on the tower would also be very smart. If you want this to work in PVP, what you have to do is you either have to try, use disconnectors for this portion. They use this disconnectors here for sure, but um, you can also use um, springs for this put connection and like hope and then try to like move them around before you start the magnet up. Um, that would work, but yeah, disconnectors are a very good choice for this. I was just too lazy to add all of them. So that is an option if you want to try to, I guess, work in non-PVP servers or in non-private servers. So. But anyways, so once this is done, grab your magnet with M. I turn down, uh, hold control to disable the hover engine because if you don't, it'll turn your thing to the side and that'll, that makes it very hard to do this. But anyways, start off by holding eight until this thing is about vertical that way. Is hold minus until you get like, at least like a little bit of almost like this thing's like a 45 degree angle. And then you're going to click O, since that's the key we've chosen for this. And you're going to go... I actually got it wrong on the old one, so it looks a little goofy. This is what it would actually look like. And then you're going to go right bracket. And once if, I mean, if you can start up your engine and see that it's following you, that's good, because then that means you can go O minus, and then N. And you should be able to start spinning it. See? Okay. So this is the basics, the base, the basic concept of my jet engine. Now, if you want um, a little hood on top of the jet engine, uh, I'm going to go into that next. But if you just came for like the jet, jet engine parts, which this works, uh, magnets may not like like to lock 100% of the time. You can see before you spawn in, test what I do. Hold shift, wait for your magnet to start up and see if it starts torquing on the actually my there you go. See if it starts trying to put torque on the rest of the build. If, um, as like, has it, um, like while the TNT is still here, try to start turning and see if that's put torque. I need to turn shift lock off because I'm keep keeps activating when I try to activate my uh, engine. But yeah, see if it puts torque while it's still attached with PVP on the rest of the build because it'll try to turn it this build slightly to the left. This whole chunk of block. But once you've done that, um, you yeah, you have your jet engine. This one actually produces a little bit of thrust. Actually, a little bit, uh, yeah, I'd say a little bit of thrust. It's kind of like a little, oh, if you go too fast with hover engines, they like to bug out like that, though. 
but I can, <laughs> I can kind of fly around, which is pretty funny. Okay, now I'm gonna let me get back to my spot. Really, I built some place really quick. I'm gonna go over the covering I did for this. Pretty simple. Um, this one, it's pretty precise, so I'd recommend building one of my summit things. You guys know there's a tutorial for it, but I might make it improve. It's just, it's the same things I used on all my main tutorials when I go over them at the beginning of the vids. It's the little angle thing. You could use that for both of them. Like, you could create, you can make them all the same keybind if you really wanted to, but... Anyways, so, we have our anchor block here. And I just shoved in the motor lock right behind it. Ideally, you'd build the motor lock in the wing of your plane. And then you'd cl um, and then it would allow you to basically build stuff around, completely covering it. Because right now, I, how do I? You can't continue these. There's blocks blocking them. So you like ideally you'd be able to push this back and up into a wing, and then fully. And then uh, if you did that, it would be very simple how to finish. Um, for a full jet engine, you just go like a right block, a down block, like a half block. I mean, not like a half block, but like a block wedge. And then um, that, or you actually, this would work a little bit better. Basically this, and poof, yeah, you got your jet engine. Or you could make it, or you could start actually like a half block farther up. But yes, that would work if you clip your locking into the wings and then like run texts down from it into it. But if you're like me right now and you don't have that and you're either making it by itself or you just want to like learn how this covering works, um, this will work for now. So you're going to start off with going right. I'm going to go right, back, right. No, I can't get my motor lock. Back, right, three from your main pilot seat. Actually, wait, no, this one's switched up a bit. That's ah, who cares. I can mess around with it. We're just making a big thing of motor lock, and that's all that matters. Beep, beep, click, clickety, clickety, click, clickety, click. It doesn't really matter the exact, you don't have to place your motor lock a specific way as long as there's a big motor lock tower coming out sideways and ends at a specific spot, you're good. Do, 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 do. I'm not gonna, I'm too tired to figure out, to be like, instruct on how your motor lock tower must be perfect. Some birds, we need the perfect motor lock tower. Anyways, after once you've done that, block on the, uh block if it ends on an edge that isn't there if it starts if it ends all the way back here just add a cylinder in front of it you just want to get make sure it pokes up and adds goes to the end um, let's see go out here and then so we end it there and cylinder and block so that's what you do when it's on two blocks away, when it's one, when the motor lock ends there, bl uh, cylinder block, if it ends here, cylinder, if it ends here, you can just go straight into it. So anyways, now let's check the rest of this and make sure it ends on good points too. This ends here, this ends here, Th both of those are solid, but this one's not, this one's not, so, okay. So this is going to be the base one, everything else is going to turn. You, we're just going to be copying this onto the rest of the build, so. Um, well, actually, I just realized I need to make it go out a little farther. So, you're going to go, actually, one block forward and then do this. And what you're basically going to do. So, this, I then used disconnectors to kind of get this cool interior design. You can use anything you want, as long as it connects to these edges. Pop, pop. And then once you've done this, I made a little thing on the top where you would hold the jet engine. It's pretty easy. All you need to do, half block, back, 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 one, two. Just a little two spot here. And then half block down one by two, and then a half block down on the back. And then once you've done that, grab trap doors. These are all going to be on equals, so they, you aren't going to be opening them, they're just always going to be in the right position, so, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to place them in this orientation so they don't, uh, try to connect themselves to, like, make sure you have the little dot closest to the, make sure the 
the dot is not um is not rubbing up against the jet engine itself but rubbing up against the motor locking because that means it won't be because they're hip they don't have a hitbox on the front so you could also work i mean technically you could uh, i mean actually no i thought you could build them in a way where they'd fold up i mean technically you could if you put like a text but all that extra work for something that you could do with this so let's see what we go what we do next uh right about here So there's one there, that's actually the center, and then there's going to be one there. So let's go forward, one, actually let me start off with these blocks, where I need to place them. Block. Okay, these all work. And then you're going to place these actually on a one, two, three, four, five, so on the fifth one I want. Then you're gonna go five, two and two. And then you're gonna go, but actually now we're now we have our motors, so replace those blocks with motors. Three motors. I just bugged that out. <coughs> Anyways, motors you're gonna be using. First one. Same thing as these ones. 0.25. And you have a <coughs> 0.5. Just, just like that one, and then lastly, 0.75. And these is basically going incrementally up to 90 degrees. And that's how you divide down any big motor turning part. You divide it into 90 degrees, and then poof. Um, <coughs> you kind of divide it, like you say, how many moving parts am I going to need to cover this distance? If it's like. I figured out I could do this in three moving parts and one still part, but so technically four parts, but then you divide those four parts because this, each one of these, this is at, you could say that this is at zero degrees, this is at 90 degrees. Well, if that is, uh, if this is true, all you need is to divide this build into three turns. So like a one, a two, and a three um, to get it working. And that's basically what most of then this is doing you're saying uh, I need to if you need to divide it down into five turns what number um, plus it's I mean I guess you're kind of doing like a 90 divide by five because 90 divide by four Actually, I don't know if I'm going I don't know if I'm going to advance or something into it because like if I go to advance I might have not my brain might have not catched up I probably need a script for this if I can start talking about how to set up a big moving turning part but yeah, I kind of you kind of divide them down because 25 plus 25, 75 plus 70, um, 25 plus 75 is 90. So, I mean, it's 25 plus 25 plus 25 until you get to 90. So you could divide it into 10 degree segments. You just do have a 10 degree segment, 20 degree segment, 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree, 60 degree, 70 degree, and then 80 degree. Um, and then you wouldn't have a 90 degree or zero degree because you'd already that would already be covered by this by your first piece. But anyways, let's get into the rest of this build. One, two, three, four. 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 Little sea shanties. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This one went five, that's not good. Make sure they all line up at the right spot. Once that's done, you can feel free to color it however you want, but we're gonna we need to make sure this works first. Grab your TNT blocks, set them on the semicolon or whatever key you use to do the secondary clip to cl uh, because this is this is clipping stuff after you set it up, so two, three. I mean after you set up the blade basically. Once that's done, spawn it in. Ta da! Eight. Done. Make sure you have like a. Make sure this thing's at like generally 45 degrees ish. And then you can go minus, turn it as far as little as you want. I normally turn it to about 45 degree.
anyways, so once that's done, start off with your normal O to clip it together. Make sure your hover engine's off, right block. Make sure it feels like it's attached. And then click on the O key. Oh, it didn't get a good grip that time. So you gotta just respawn it and hope it gets a good grip the next time. That's kind of, that's the downside of magnet lock. It doesn't always wanna just attach itself. In order, for best results, I recommend turning on the magnet extremely fast right after you start clipping. Like almost while it's still moving. So like I, you click OR really fast. Once that's done, oh, uh, see it got on this time. So yeah, it's the one downside of Mango Lucky. It's kind of like a little goofy goober bug. And then you click the rest of the keys. Actually, this one got a grip too. So I guess you don't need your main pilot seat at all for that. Well, actually, it did bug a bit. Like you see how it's kind of a bit lower and a bit higher. You seem to want to be closest to your main pilot seat to avoid that kind of stuff. But anyways. Um, but yeah, I guess for the most part, you don't really need it to be connected to your main pilot seat. I think it's, I guess it's just less buggy. But anyways, once you've done that, turn off your special key, whatever you've chosen. And we can fly like birds. I don't know. I guess all that stuff I said earlier was superstition because each time I didn't have my main pilot seat attached, it refused to work. Uh, must have just been a bad luck streak. Anyways, let me get out. I just prefer to have it connected. Uh, I guess, let me see, come on, let me, okay, well, I'm stuck, oh, actually, I lined it up very good, the problem with this thing, very small amount of, like, looseness to work with, if you angle something just slightly too far, you can have a gap, like, every incrementally in your wing, I mean, even I have that, but it, I got it really well, since, like, I barely got an angle, the, the better, the closer it's angled, like, 60, uh, I'm not, 45 degrees, um, you're, you're like, I, ch I choose a piece, try to get it as close, uh, as closely angled to 45 degrees as I can, and then that normally works from there, but, but yeah, this is your jet engine, it will work, it's powered off of a little hover engine, if you want to put this on a plane, you could try, I would recommend only using it on lightly motor locked planes, because if you use this thing on a heavy motor locked plane, it is not going to be fun, so let me get out of here, I'm stuck, stuck, jetpack. But yeah, if you use it on heavy motor lock plane, I don't know how all this would work, especially while you're in the turning stages. The amount of lag it might produce later, too. But overall, yeah, it's a cool little engine design. I kind of copied Ro Rodits. I'll give them credit for the idea of using text in them. I just added some extra stuff, added a cover, and added magnet lock to it. So, but yeah, once that's done, yeah, so this is it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you, see you guys later. Bye.